Today on CityCast Philly, it's the Friday News Roundup. We're talking about U.S. Senator John Fetterman's first week back to work, the city's plan to roll out multilingual emergency alerts, and Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts' multi-million dollar extension. It's Friday, April 21st. I'm Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Julia Terusso, political reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. OJ Spivey, sports contributor for the Philadelphia Tribune. Hey. Hi, Trine. Thanks for having me as well. And Emily Neal, digital content producer for WHYY News. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks, Trine. Happy to be here. Great. Okay. I love doing icebreakers to kind of just get us in in the mode. Um, Yesterday on the show, we did an episode about the Philly Fanatic. So I have to ask y'all, what's your favorite sports mascot? We can't pick the Fanatic. You can if you want to. (laughs) (laughs) The Fanatic was my first love. Um, You know, I know I know Gritty came came later, but I'm going to stick with the green guy. Okay, I love that, Julia. (laughs) I love Philly sports, but I am from Baltimore. So if I don't oh. say the <laughs> Oriole bird, um, my family might disown me. So, oh, <laughs> but for Philly sports, I will say I love the fanatic and you got to love gritty too. So, yeah. OJ, what do you think? Well, I met both uh, the fanatic. I've met also gritty. Uh, so these are our mascots, but I will say, and hopefully I don't get in trouble for this because the Phillies lost to them last last uh, in the World Series. My daughter likes Orbit, and that's a Houston Astros uh, mascot. He's like a Martian, but she always says how cute he is. So I'll just throw him out there. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we'll talk about sports later in the show. But first, I do want to talk about some big news stories this week. Julia, you were in Washington, D.C. this week uh, covering U.S. Senator John Fetterman's return to work. And this was big news because he's been undergoing some treatment for depression. And not only that, but he's been very public about this. So how is the senator feeling? What was the reaction to have him back at the Capitol? Yeah, so the Senator Fetterman returned on Monday to Capitol Hill. He had spent six weeks in inpatient treatment for clinical depression, which, as you said, he had been very public about, and he got a lot of support from colleagues while he was going through it. Um, Senator Casey, the other Pennsylvania senator, visited him in the hospital. I also learned, because I I did wind up getting to talk to him while I was there, um, that he He's become friends with a Republican senator from Alabama who sort of shared this temporary office space with him and she visited him in the hospital. So he it it was a pretty warm welcome. Um, He walked into a Democratic caucus luncheon on Tuesday to applause. Uh, The the majority leader, Chuck Schumer, you know, gave brief remarks and said that he thought he he was what he'd done was really brave and had potentially saved a lot of people's lives who might, you know, seek treatment for depression. So it was it was definitely a warm welcome for him on both sides of the aisle. Um, and it wasn't a super typical week. He, he also chaired a subcommittee hearing, which, you know, normally might not get that much attention. But because of all the attention that's been focused on him, there were a, a lot of people covering it and, and kind of following how how he did. He still has auditory processing and some language difficulties stemming from his stroke. And, you know, that was evident as he proceeded over the hearing. And his stroke was actually last year, right? Yes. I'm sorry. This The, the Fetterman saga is a long one. He, uh, he suffered a stroke in May. Mm-hmm. He uh, won the Democratic primary for Senate and then won a pretty brutal campaign in November to, to become senator and then announced that he had been struggling with depression and needed to take a leave in February. And he, he said that the campaign did contribute uh, as well as the stroke to, to his depression. Mm-hmm. But, um, he, you know, he, he said that it was kind of like returning for the first time to the Senate because even though he'd been there for a month and a half, he really wasn't himself. And so he, he said he's he's feeling a lot more positive and a lot more like you know, able able to do the job. So what can we expect for him in the coming weeks? I think a lot more adjusting. You know, again, he'd only been in the job for a month and a half before he left. So one of the things that 
his staff was, was telling me is that, you know, just figuring out scheduling, they're going to move offices. They're in this kind of uh, sad temporary space in the basement, windowless, bad lighting, and they're going to move into a, a much nicer office. Um, so getting acclimated to all of the committees he's on and also figuring out, you know, how he can effectively do his job with some of his auditory processing challenges. He'll, he, he benefits from having transcription services. So like okay. an aide will follow him with an iPad. And uh, if he's having a quick conversation with someone, they'll just pull up the iPad so that he can see the transcription. I, I think his staff internally is figuring that out, but how to apply it to to every corner of the Senate and how the Senate works is something they're they're still working on. All right, and we'll definitely keep a uh, watch on that story. Emily, you recently reported on, you know, some updates from that recent water threat um, that we had in our area, and you looked into you know the the people in our area who may not speak English or speak other languages um, other than English, really struggle to get accurate information from the city. So what's the city doing to address this? So the city right now, and prior to the water threat, they were working on a multilingual alert system, and that's through the Office of Emergency Management. And they have their Ready Philadelphia platform. So anyone can sign up for alerts via that platform about any number of events or emergency situations that might be affecting the city. And essentially, the multilingual alert system was already in progress. I think the water contamination threat really highlighted the need for that sort of official communication from the city in languages other than English that are widely spoken in the city. We know that more than 350,000 Philadelphians speak languages other than English. uh, And And that's according to the U.S. uh, census data. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. And having that sort of official communication in a time of an uh, emergency is so essential. The one community organizer uh, and grassroots media person that I spoke with for the article, Ariane Bracho, she mentioned how really the water contamination threat wasn't the first time that we've seen this gap and this lack of language access. Really, unfortunately, COVID-19 uh, was a really good example of that. Mm-hmm. And even for uh, Spanish language speakers who are our largest language group after English, had to struggle to find accurate in- information in in the early days of the pandemic and a lot of spanish speaking activists and community leaders were the ones who were bridging that gap but okay. um what we're seeing now is that the city is in this program in particular is really thinking ahead and preparing for any type of emergency situation i think the alert system covers dozens of different emergency situations that we could see as a city. And they're sort of having these set messages available to send to people in 10 different languages, including... I was just going to ask that. I'm really curious. What what other languages are they going to include? The full list of languages that will be available are French, Spanish, Portuguese, Haitian Creole, Vietnamese, Swahili, simplified Chinese, Arabic, Russian, and American Sign Language. Great. And when does the city hope to um, have this roll out? Their target implementation date is sometime within the 2023 calendar year. Okay. So we'll definitely look forward to that. OJ, we've got to talk about another big news story this week. Our starting quarterback, Jalen Hurts, locked in a big deal with the team. Tell us about this. Well, it's a win-win for both parties, both the Eagles and Jalen Hurts. Uh, Of course, uh, he's earned a new contract, uh, being able to negotiate a new contract. And the Eagles wanted to get this done as well uh, so they can focus on the 2023 season to get back to the Super Bowl. Uh, That's right. That's right. (laughs) Yes. So it's a $255 million contract uh, in total um, if he reaches. Uh, most of the incentives. It's currently the biggest contract in NFL history if you average it out. Um, So he'll make about 
$51 million a year um, if he reaches uh, all of those incentives. So it is a big contract, but the cool thing about it is the Eagles were able to space it out to where it's not uh, heavy on the salary cap, and that allows the team to uh, improve when they need to, especially these next four years. Okay. And that's the uh, magic of uh, General Manager Javi Roseman, uh, who helped get this deal done. And also, too, I just want to um, celebrate or even uh, mention uh, Jalen Hurts' agent, uh, which is Nicole Lynn, a female agent, a right. uh, black woman. And this deal is said to be the biggest uh, contract in sports history uh, brokered by a woman. So that's big news as well. So they have a great relationship. And ironically, Nicole Lynn uh, went to Oklahoma just as Jalen Hurts did uh, after he went to Alabama. Okay. So there's a okay. connection there. <laughs> and the, fun, the yeah. great story about that is Nicole Lynn reached out to Jalen Hurts uh, via a direct message, via DM. What? And she that's how they got DMs into business just together. Made that deal. She slid in the crazy. DMs, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so, she's a up, she was an up and coming agent at the time. She already had uh, a first round pick as a uh, client. She has about at least two dozen clients now, I believe, maybe more. And I'm sure she'll get more after this deal, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, oh, so. for sure. That's so great. <laughs> but, um, that's how, but that's that how they so connected. Cool. And Jalen Hurst trusted her. And basically, he has a, a his whole team, his whole management team is females. Uh, so uh, shout out to him for trusting in women uh, to make him a very rich man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to talk about some maybe underreported stories. Emily, your team has uh, just announced that there's a new climate desk at WHYY. So they will focus on stories about how climate change affects people living in our region, and that includes Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware. What else can people expect from this new desk? Yeah, it's a really exciting initiative. Um, and just to note, I'm not directly involved. It's led by Susan Phillips and Lindsay Lazarski. It's such an important and broad topic to focus on, but what we're seeing more and more, unfortunately, is how impacted uh, Philadelphians, uh, New Jersey residents, Delaware residents, Pennsylvania residents are being, how impacted they're being by a lot of climate-related events such as wildfires, pollution, you know, all of that. So I think it's a really great initiative and you can find a lot of great investigative reporting as well as just useful explainers to better understand how climate change is affecting our region. Great. And we'll have a link in our show notes so folks can uh, stay up um, on that news. Going back to sports, uh, OJ, Sixers played last night. Uh, we're, we're actually recording this episode on Thursday. <laughs> um, but what can you tell us about the team? Um, I'm really, really hoping and praying that Joel Embiid will be named MVP. Uh, I think he will. If you look at the odds, if you're into, you know, betting and gambling and all that, uh, he's at he's been at the top of the ladder for the past month of the season. Uh, so I, I don't have many doubts uh, or any doubt that for that matter that he will be the MVP. And I know he's been wanting that award, but I know his prize is really uh, winning an NBA championship. And there is a lot of pressure yeah. on the Sixers yeah. this year to get past the second round. They haven't been able to do that uh, over the past few years. Uh, but this is pretty much the best team that they've had since Joel Embiid has been here. And this is the best year that he's had, along with Embiid, uh, Harden, uh, Tyrese Maxey. Uh, you just hope that they get past the second round. And with them playing Brooklyn currently, you just hope that it's a short series. They could take care of business, get some rest and play in a second round and hopefully get past uh, who we presume it might be the Boston Celtics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, Julia, before we shift, what other political news caught your eye this week? Well, just this morning, uh, we heard that there there is going to be a poll released in the mayor's race. Okay. There haven't really been any independent public polls done of the Philadelphia mayor's race. Mm -hmm. And the Committee of 70 said this week that they're going to do a poll that will be released before the election. So definitely something I think our politics team will be keeping an eye on for sure as, as yeah. that race heats up and it's, it's coming up. 
Yes, and we're less than a month away. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll find out which candidates are actually doing well. Yeah. Okay, before we head into the weekend, let's talk about some good news. Um, Emily, your team spent some time with some Muslim leaders in our area to talk about some initiatives that they have working um, about gun violence solutions. What what did they hear? Yeah, so WHYY uh, gun violence prevention reporter Sammy Keola spoke with uh, Muslim leaders and Muslim Philadelphians from throughout the city talking to them about how gun violence has been impacting a lot of Muslim communities. And at the same time, many um, mosques, many imams, many uh, members of the Muslim community are really working with youth and cultivating a sort of safe space and a place of support for young people in their uh, houses of worship. And I think it's also just important to say, too, that... um, Eid, happy Eid to, to all of our, our Muslim listeners. And there's also a story time celebration happening um, on Sunday at the Police Touch Museum celebrating Eid. All right. Um, did anyone else want to mention any other news stories before I let you all go? Well, Eagles will be starting their off-season training program uh, starting next week. Uh, So we'll see Jalen Hurts. We'll see all the rest of the guys uh, start to begin their quest uh, to get back to the Super Bowl in 2023. Yes, I love it. (laughs) Um, OJ Spivey, sports contributor for the Philadelphia Tribune. Emily Neal, digital content producer for WHYY News. And Julia Terusso, political reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thank you all for joining me this week on CityCast Philly. Thank you, Trinae. Thank you, Trinae. It's time for the tip of the day, where we share a life hack for living in Philly. April 22nd is Record Store Day, and what better way to celebrate than getting a free limited edition vinyl EP with some local independent artists. This is a part of WXPN's Homegrown Originals. The first 30 customers can go to their favorite record stores at Main Street Music in Maniunk, Repo Records on South Street, and Siren Records in Doylestown. For more information on this cool event, go to xpn.org. If you have a tip of the day, we'd love to hear from you too. Call or text us at 215-259-8170. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Our lead producer is Laura Benchoff. Our producers are Abby Fritz and Elizabeth Kama. Our Hey Philly newsletter editor is Brittany Valentine. And our host is me, Trinae Nuri. Music is by Philly's own Interminable, with additional music from All the Kimonos and James Weldon. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend? Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter. It's called Hey Philly. We'll be back Monday morning with more news from around the city. Have a great weekend and be safe.